What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone celebrating out there. This is the one day a year where everybody celebrates a Christian holiday. Um, there are others that a lot of people celebrate, but for whatever reason, everybody likes to go out and get absolutely wasted on St. Patrick's Day. Um, I'm not gonna get into the Catholic information regarding St. Patrick other than the fact that he's an Irish Catholic saint and it's a great excuse to celebrate with friends. Because he's an Irish Catholic saint and it's St. Patrick's Day, I have an Irish whiskey. Redbreast, 21 year old. Okay, this is a single pot still Irish whiskey. It is non-chill filtered with no added color. It is made with both malted and unmalted barley. What that means is, um, malted barley is when the barley is germinated to the point where sprouts start coming out of the barley and then they use it to distill. They make their whiskey. Um, unmalted barley is just that raw, fresh off the plant barley, okay? Um, so that is the main difference between most Irish whiskeys and scotch. If they're single grain, they, they tend to have both malted and unmalted barley, all right? That's why they don't usually call them single malts because not all of the barley is malted, all right? Um, I've had this sitting here for a while. I plan to nose it and taste it without water and then I'm gonna add some water and I'll tell you exactly why. Okay, so as you can see, I'm about halfway through this bottle. I uh, had my three brothers share it with me not too long ago, a few weeks back, and we all agreed it was very good whiskey, okay? Um, I think they may have liked it a little bit better than I did, and I'm going to tell you why in just a sec. Okay, whenever I see a review of this, whenever I am drinking this with somebody, I tend to ask them, do you pick up? mango or in the review it'll say clearly that they pick up mango and it's very identifiable in the nose both with water and without water and it's also identifiable on the palate okay so mango is very dominant um, there's like a brown sugar quality to it as well I want to say that if someone handed this to me and just asked me to nose it, I would think it was a rum, to be honest with you. There's a lot of rum characteristics to it, like a cola, a syrupy like cola smell, even a bit of, like I said, brown sugar, okay? And then you get the tropical fruits, the tropical fruits that you associate with um, a rum, okay? especially like a Dominican or Jamaican rum. Okay, but this is a whiskey and like when you smell it, after some time with it, you definitely will know it's a whiskey. It's just you can easily mistake it if you're a novice for it being a rum because there are similar qualities. All right, on the palate, Okay, so this comes in three stages. On entry, it's a bit hot. Mid palate's a bit hot as well. You start to pick up a little bit of the sweetness. When you swallow, it leaves your tongue with that oily residue. Um, it's mango is hugely prevalent on the finish, okay? It coats your mouth with that fruity, tropical fruit type taste as you swallow the, the whiskey, all right? It's a beautiful finish, okay, a beautiful finish. It's pretty hot though. It's surprisingly hot at 46%, which is not that high an, an ABV, alcohol by volume, um, but it's still pretty hot. It's surprisingly hot, like I said, for a 21 year old, I've had whiskeys that are higher in alcohol percentage, that are younger and don't 
don't um, have that hot entry and that hot mid palate. Okay, so if I were to score it and grade it now, it would get a lower mark. That's why I add some water, drop the ABV a little bit. Um, it's not. Maybe that was a little too much. It's not to the point where you're not gonna enjoy the whiskey. You'll still enjoy it straight, okay? I just think if you wanna give this its best opportunity to impress you, you should add a little bit of water. Probably about two espresso spoons or about a cap full of your uh, bottled water or something like that, okay? Okay, that rum-like quality picks up even more. Um, almost like a bit of molasses. Still very fruity, you get some dark fruit in there, figs, dates, okay? Uh, sugared, fudgy dates. Okay, on the palate. So, that water allows you to enjoy it from start to finish without that slight burn on the tongue. It's super fruity. It's got a really nice character to it. Not like any scotch. I wouldn't, this is hard to compare to a scotch because it's not like a scotch. It's actually more um, in line with that Cavallon Vino Burrit that I've had. Okay, you're getting a lot of the same tropical type fruits. Um, I would say, although the Vino Barrique is a lot younger, it's a little bit smoother as well. So that's a weird word to use for a young whiskey, but um, I find it doesn't burn as much. And that's a, ca a cask strength, okay? So I don't know if it's a barrel thing or just um, simply a unmalted barley thing. It's very possible that that's the case. But it's really good whiskey, okay? So I don't wanna I don't wanna sit here and sound negative. I'm not trying to be negative about this whiskey. I just I think part of it, whenever I have a whiskey that costs two hundred dollars plus, so this one cost me two hundred and fifty dollars, which is probably the global price for um, red breast twenty one year old. It's not that much cheaper anywhere else. Okay, it's about two hundred dollars in the US with conversion. To turn that into a Canadian price, it wouldn't be worth it for me to buy in the U.S. It's actually more worth it for me to buy in Canada. Um, so, as a global price, two fifty is a good price. It's still expensive. It's an expensive whiskey, all right. And when I'm spending two hundred plus on a whiskey, I really want it to be the right palate, the right nose, and. This is almost there, it's just not exactly there for me. Okay, so that's where it loses its marks. If I have to give this a grade, I'm gonna say this is an A, borderline A minus, okay? Um, I'm curious to know what you guys think, because I know a lot of people really, really like this. Um, I think this appeals to a lot of people that are used to drinking cask strength rum, sorry, cask strength uh, bourbon, and like, higher ABV type whiskey because it appeals. It, it drinks like a 50% whiskey. It drinks like something that's 50% plus actually. So um, still really good. It needs a bit of water. Actually, I thought I added a little bit too much, but that's probably the perfect amount because it still get gives you a little bit of a kick, but not doesn't drown it out. And you still get all the flavors that you want out of it. So I'm gonna give it one more taste. It's really, really nice whiskey, okay? Um, the For me, what brings it down in mark is that I have to add water. Whenever I have to add water to something, it brings it down a little bit for me. I have a feeling that if I were to wait, leave it at half weight and wait about three months and, and come back to this, that air in the bottle would help the whiskey and it would lighten it up a little bit and make it that much more smooth. But unfortunately, uh, we're kind of pressed for time because it is St. Paddy's Day and I really wanted to do an Irish whiskey. So 
um, I chose this one. And it's not like I didn't have a fair, give it a fair shake. Like I said, it's halfway through the bottle um, and probably about four or five of those was me, myself. So it's, it's been given its fair shake. It's still great whiskey. It's still got a great mark at an A. Um, but like I said, it's expensive whiskey. So I personally would like to, I'm very interested to try the 12 year old, the 12 year old cast strength and the 15 year old to see how they shake up compared to this because I have a funny feeling that at 40%, the 12 year old probably drinks perfect. I could be wrong, but um, that's just maybe my palate. Maybe I'm a little weaker than most when it comes to the palate, but that's just my personal opinion. All right, so that's an A. Uh, happy St. Patty's Day to all of you. I have a whole bunch of stuff coming up. I recently purchased a Highland Park 25 year old. I also purchased a Bunnahabhain 25 year old. They are safely in my storage area. Um, I will be reviewing both of those eventually. And I plan to be getting a Glendronic 25 year old Grand Deer. So that's in the works. Hopefully everything goes well. We'll see what happens. But uh, stay tuned because there's lots of great things coming your way, guys. All right. Cheers.